This is the AMD Athlon 3000G. I bought this CPU for just £12 from CEX. It's not only the cheapest AM4 processor I could find, but it's also an APU. So unlike most AMD processors, this has integrated graphics. This processor came out towards the end of 2019, so it's not terribly old, and given the price, I just had to buy it. But what's it like to use in 2024? Let's find out. Now, even though this is the cheapest AIM4 APU I could find, it's not the slowest one. That honour goes to the AMD Athlon 200GE, although surprisingly, it was over twice as much money as this Athlon 3000G. Specs-wise, this CPU has two cores and four threads, 4MB of L3 cache, it has a clock speed of 3.5GHz, and it has a TDP of 35 watts. So, on the surface, I think this would be a great CPU for a basic home server. Especially given the low price, the fairly low power consumption, and the integrated graphics means it can easily be used for a small form factor build. But is it any good for gaming? Well, let's find out. To test this, I paired this processor with 16GB of DDR4 RAM in dual channel at 2400MHz. Ideally I'd use faster memory, but I didn't have any on hand, and while I did try overclocking the memory, it caused some problems when logging on. I also used the 240GB Kingston SSD for the boot drive. I also removed the RX570 I had in the system because I want to see how well the CPU would perform without a dedicated GPU, otherwise the video wouldn't be very interesting. The first thing I wanted to test was to see if this processor could natively run Windows 11. Now, you might be wondering, why am I not running Linux? Well, there are two reasons for this. The first reason is because one of the games I wanted to benchmark doesn't run on Linux. Secondly, Windows 10 is losing support in October 2025, so if you bought the CPU today and you couldn't use Linux, would you be able to use it in an era where Windows 11 is the only supported version of Windows? So I ended up testing a few different games, Minecraft, Rocket League, Counter-Strike 2, Overwatch and Valorant. While these aren't the most demanding games out there, they can still pose a challenge for integrated graphics because not all integrated graphics are the same, and the performance can also vary depending on a few factors. Plus, some of these games have gotten more intensive over time, most notably CS2, which obviously used to be CSGO. The first game I tested was Minecraft Java Edition at 1080p with low settings at 4 chunk render distance and the FOV set to 90. Now, Minecraft is a bit of an odd game as it's fairly lightweight but also quite CPU intensive. The game averaged around the mid hundreds with highs in the 200s and rapid drops when anything drastic was going on. It's certainly playable, but I can tell the game is struggling with just two cores, which I think is the CPU's biggest weakness. The next game I tested was Counter-Strike 2 at the lowest settings, which primarily ran between 45 and 60 FPS, averaging around 50. You'll have to excuse my terrible gameplay as I couldn't see the screen properly due to my tripod being in the way. I tried it at 1080p, 1600x900, and 720p, and the frame rate was about the same regardless of the resolution. Although playing at lower resolutions is noticeably smoother, while playing at 1080p has occasional micro stutters. I played both online and offline against bots, and I know Dust2 isn't the smoothest map out there, but it is the most iconic and I was honestly surprised by how well this game ran. The next game was Rocket League, which I ran with performance settings. This averaged around 70 FPS at 1080p, 80 FPS at 1600x900, and around 87 FPS at 720p. The game looks pretty bad with performance settings, especially at 720p, but I'm more concerned about playability than looks. Next we have Overwatch 2, although I just call it Overwatch because you can't play the original anymore. I played at the lowest settings, and it was pretty much lots at 31fps regardless of the resolution I used. This frame rate isn't ideal for a competitive game like this, and although the FPS is low, it's at least consistent and isn't constantly jumping. It's a bit like playing on a last gen console, so I'd say it's actually playable, although not competitively. Now I also tried to run Valorant, which is the only game on this list that doesn't run on Linux. Unfortunately I couldn't even launch the game because Vanguard Anti-Cheat insisted that Secure Boot was disabled, even though it wasn't. Now, it seems quite a lot of people have had problems running Valorant on Windows 11, including one of my customers, and I had to teach him how to downgrade to Windows 10 over the phone just to play this game. So yeah, screw Valorant and screw Windows 11. 
Now, even though I couldn't test the game myself, I did look at benchmarks other people made with similar hardware and using Windows 10. And it seems Valorant is fairly lightweight and you can comfortably play this game at 1080p and exceed 60fps. Overall, I'm very impressed with this CPU. Yes, it's not particularly powerful and being a dual core kind of limits its potential, but the fact you can even run these games and get a somewhat decent experience is quite cool. Remember, this is £12 for both the CPU and the GPU. Now, for a gaming PC, it's not the best value for money, even if you do get a dedicated GPU. But for regular computing, or for use in a basic home server, it's a pretty good option if you already have an AM4 motherboard lying about. In any case, thank you all for watching, and until next time, cheerio.